In the heart of a forgotten town, shrouded by the whispers of the past, stood an abandoned carnival. Its once vibrant colors were now dulled by time, its laughter replaced by silence. Among its desolate attractions, the mirror maze stood, untouched by vandals and the ravages of time, as if protected by unseen forces, the maze was rumored to be cursed. Locals spoke of visitors who entered, never to return, their last echoes of laughter trapped within its walls. It was on a dare that Alex and Sam, two thrill-seekers with a penchant for the paranormal, decided to explore it one fateful night. The air was thick with mist as they approached, the entrance to the maze beckoning them with an eerie silence. The moment they stepped inside, the atmosphere changed. The air became colder, the silence deeper. Walls of mirrors stretched endlessly, their reflections twisting and turning into impossible shapes. As they delved deeper, the maze seemed to come alive. Reflections began to flicker, showing images that weren't there, a shadowy figure standing behind them, a twisted version of themselves with eyes too dark, smiles too wide. They laughed it off at first, attributing it to the trick of the lights and their imagination, but then the reflection started to reach out, hands pressed against the glass, fingers curling as if beckoning them closer. Whispered voices called their names, the sound coming from all directions, yet nowhere at all. The laughter of unseen children echoed, bouncing off the mirrors, playing a symphony of dread, panic set in as they realized the maze was reshaping itself, paths leading to dead ends, familiar turns becoming unfamiliar. The reflections became more aggressive, pounding on the glass, the barrier between reality and reflection thinning. In a desperate attempt to escape, they found themselves at the heart of the maze, a circular room with a single, large mirror. Unlike the others, this mirror showed no reflection. Instead, it shimmered like the surface of a still lake, inviting them to step closer, the air hummed with power as they approached, the ground vibrating beneath their feet. It was then they understood, the maze wasn't haunted by ghosts or cursed by witches. It was alive, a sentient being that fed on the fears and souls of those who dared to enter its domain, the mirror wasn't a barrier it was a gateway. A passage for the maze to send its reflections into the real world, replacing the visitors with copies of itself, spreading its curse, one soul at a time. As the realization dawned on them, the reflections surged forward, breaking through the glass with a sound like the world ending. In a final act of defiance, Alex and Sam shattered the mirror before them, the explosion of glass echoing through the maze, silence fell. When the rescue team arrived the next morning, they found Alex and Sam at the entrance of the maze, unharmed but forever changed. The mirror maze stood silent, its power diminished but not destroyed, waiting for its next victims. The reflections, however, were never just reflections. They were the maze's eyes and hands, reaching into the world of the living. And somewhere, in a town that people forgot, the maze still stands, its mirrors clear and waiting, its appetite endless. As Alex and Sam left the town, they avoided their own reflections, afraid that one day, they might blink, and their reflections would not. In the shadow of the overgrown willows, the old mill stood as a relic of a bygone era, its once thriving gears now silenced by decades of neglect. The village elders spoke of it in hushed tones, warning the curious away with tales of the ghost of Jasper Morley, a worker who met his untimely demise in the mill's grinding gears, consumed by the very machine he served. The story begins with Lena, a young and ambitious writer fascinated by the supernatural, seeking inspiration for her next book. Despite the villagers' warnings, she was drawn to the mill, her curiosity ignited by the tales of Jasper's restless spirit. Armed with her camera, voice recorder, and a steely resolve, she crossed the threshold into the mill, unaware of the true horror that awaited her. The interior of the mill was a catacomb of rusted machinery and cobweb-laden beams, the air thick with the stench of mold and decay. 
Lena's footsteps echoed through the empty corridors, a symphony of solitude that was suddenly interrupted by the faint sound of machinery grinding into life. Startled, she followed the sound, her recorder capturing the phantom echoes of the past. As night fell, the mill transformed. Shadows danced along the walls, and the air grew cold with the presence of something unseen. Lena sensed she was no longer alone, the ghost of Jasper Morley had awakened. His story unfolded not through words, but through a series of chilling visions that seized Lena's mind, the accident that claimed his life, his body gruesomely entangled in the gears, and his spirit's eternal imprisonment within the mill's decaying walls, determined to free Jasper from his earthly bonds, Lena scoured the mill for anything that could offer a clue to his unrest. It was in the deepest bowels of the mill that she found it, a hidden chamber containing the untouched remains of Jasper's personal belongings, among them a diary that revealed the dark truth. Jasper had been murdered, pushed into the gears by a jealous co-worker, his death disguised as a tragic accident. His spirit could find no peace, not while his murderer walked free, his crime buried alongside Jasper's mangled body, Lena emerged from the mill with a new purpose. She presented her findings to the village, unearthing the secrets that time had sought to conceal. The murderer, now an old man burdened with guilt, confessed to the crime, begging for forgiveness from the spirit he had wronged. On the night of his confession, the villagers gathered at the mill, a collective witness to the spectral phenomenon that unfolded. Jasper's ghost appeared before them, not as the fearsome apparition they had feared, but as a figure of sorrow, his form flickering in the moonlight. With the truth revealed and his story told, Jasper's spirit was finally released, dissipating into the night air with a whispered thank you that rustled the leaves of the willow trees, the old mill stands still, a silent guardian of the past, but no longer a place of dread. Lena's bravery had not only uncovered a buried injustice but had also laid to rest the ghost of the old mill. Her story, however, was far from over. For in delving into the supernatural, she had opened a door to the unknown, and what lies beyond, waiting in the shadows, might be her next chilling tale. In the quaint, fog-swathed village of Ellsworth's Hollow, nestled between whispering forests and somber hills, there stood an ancient, ivy-clad manor known to the villagers as the Hallowmere Estate. For generations, it had been the subject of whispered tales and superstitious murmurs, all because of one peculiar, inexplicable phenomenon, the appearance of ghostly handprints on the windows, always found in the chilling light of dawn, Fingers splayed wide as if pressing from the other side, seeking entrance or perhaps signaling a desperate plea from within. The story begins with the arrival of the Grayson family, who, unaware of the manor's eerie reputation, were charmed by its antique allure and the sprawling beauty of its neglected gardens. They laughed away the warnings of the locals, attributing the tales to rural superstitions. But their skepticism was soon to be challenged, the first of the handprints appeared on the morning following a tempestuous night, vivid against the condensation of the master bedroom window. The print was small, delicate, almost childlike. Clara Grayson, the youngest of the family, was fascinated, pressing her own hand against it, marveling at the difference in size. Her parents, Charles and Eliza, were bemused but unsettled, and the local constable could offer no rational explanation, suggesting only the pranks of village children, but no earthly child could reach the second-story windows where new prints began to appear, nor could they explain how they were made from the with each passing day, as the autumn mists grew thicker and the nights longer, the handprints proliferated, now appearing on mirrors and glass doors, tracing silent messages in the dust of the long-abandoned library, leading Clara on a ghostly scavenger hunt. She was drawn to an old nursery, hidden away beneath layers of peeling wallpaper and sorrow. There, amidst the detritus of a bygone era, she found the remnants of a tragedy, a child's locket, 
a diary filled with the scrawlings of a lonely heart, and a faded photograph of a young girl, her eyes hauntingly familiar. The climax of our tale unfolds on the eve of the harvest moon, when Clara, guided by whispers in the dark, discovered the diary's final entry, dated the night of the great fire that had consumed part of the manor a century ago. The girl in the photograph, Annabel Hallomere, had perished in the flames, her death mourned by none, for she was the illegitimate offspring of a scandalous liaison, hidden away in shame. As Clara read the last desperate words of Annabel, the air grew cold, and a palpable sense of sorrow filled the room. Turning, Clara found herself face to face with Annabel's specter, her small hand reaching out, not in malice, but in loneliness. With trembling fingers, Clara reached back, and as their hands touched, the ghostly handprints throughout the manor began to fade, as if Annabel's spirit, acknowledged at last, found the solace it sought. I and the aftermath, Clara convinced her parents to dedicate a part of the manor as a memorial to Annabel and those like her, forgotten by history but deserving of remembrance. The handprints never appeared again, but on certain nights, when the fog rolls in thick and the moon casts a gentle glow over the estate, some claim to see the figure of a young girl, her laughter mingling with the wind, finally free to roam the gardens of her silent prison and so, the manor at Ellsworth's Hollow stands as a testament not only to the mysteries of the past but to the healing that comes with understanding and acceptance. The ghostly handprints, once a source of fear, became a symbol of a lost soul's redemption and a family's courage in facing the unknown. In the heart of an ancient, fog-swathed forest, obscured by the gnarled arms of timeless trees and enveloped in an ever-present, suffocating silence, stood the chapel of lost souls. It was a place spoken of only in hushed whispers by the villagers nearby, a place where the boundary between the living and the dead was as thin as the mist that perpetually shrouded its crumbling stone facade, the chapel had once been a sanctuary, a beacon of hope for the weary and the penitent. But that was long before the darkness took root in its heart. Now, it was said that the prayers offered within its walls did not reach heaven but were instead swallowed by the shadows, leaving behind echoes that were not words but the cries of the lost, the souls who had come seeking solace and found only perdition. Eleanor, a researcher with a fascination for the arcane and the forgotten, stumbled upon the legend of the chapel during her studies. Driven by a mixture of scholarly curiosity and a personal quest for something she couldn't quite name, she set out to find this chapel of lost souls. The villagers she encountered on her journey spoke of the chapel as if it were a living thing, warning her to stay away lest she become another whisper in the wind, another soul ensnared by its curse, undeterred, Eleanor ventured into the forest. As she drew closer, the silence grew oppressive, and the air turned cold with the chill of unseen gazes upon her. Finally, the chapel loomed before her, its architecture a grotesque parody of sanctity, with spires that seemed to claw at the grey sky above, inside, the chapel was vast, far larger than its exterior suggested. Stained glass windows, obscured by years of neglect, filtered the outside light into hues of blood and shadow, casting eerie patterns on the stone floor. The pews were empty, save for a layer of dust that seemed undisturbed by time, Eleanor approached the altar, her footsteps echoing in the unnatural silence. It was then she heard it, a whisper, soft and sorrowful, a lament that seemed to seep from the very walls around her. More voices joined, a symphony of despair that filled the air, growing louder, more insistent, frightened yet compelled, Eleanor realized the voices were not merely echoes but the souls themselves, trapped within the chapel, their cries woven into the fabric of the place. As she listened, the voices began to change, morphing from cries of despair into something darker, angrier. They were not asking for help, they were hungry, panic set in as the realization dawned on Eleanor, the chapel did not trap souls by accident, it was built for this purpose, a beacon not for the lost, but for something far older and malevolent, something that fed on despair and sorrow. 
The prayers did not echo, they were consumed, fuel for an ancient darkness that lurked beneath the chapel, awakened now by her presence. As the shadows began to coalesce, forming shapes both grotesque and pitiful, Eleanor understood too late that the chapel did not just house lost souls, it created them. And as the darkness enveloped her, her own cry joined the chorus, another lost soul in the chapel of lost souls, where prayers echo with the cries of the lost, never to be heard beyond its accursed walls but the story doesn't end with Eleanor's demise. The chapel stands still, hungering, drawing the curious and the broken with whispers of solace. And so the cycle continues, the chapel feeding, growing stronger with each soul that believes it can defy the curse of the chapel of lost souls.